Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Mysteries and Oddities video. I promised I was going to go ahead and do another entry here based on my new series. Thank you so much again for the very, very warm and nice comments associated with my first video, the Google Plex. So I'm glad to see that people are enjoying this new series and I want to do a few videos here and then probably start taking your suggestions afterwards. So again, that way everyone can get an idea of essentially what I'm looking for in these new videos. So this one has to do with the mystery. It's an unknown solved, unsolved case essentially to this very day of a man who hijacked a plane, ransomed a bunch of money, jumped off of the plane and disappeared into some void of some sort because he has not been found. There has been a lot of speculation tied to who he is, tied to where he is, even the idea that maybe he's just dead and everyone is speculating for nothing. But it has to do with the mystery of the man known as D.B. Cooper. So the initials D.B. followed by his last name, Cooper. So I'm going to go ahead and talk about that here. By the way, I'm just going to give a very brief set of information, I guess like talking points, bullet points about his case, uh, mainly because there is so much uh, dearth of information out there. I mean, we're talking about documentaries that are hours long. We're talking about movies. We're talking about TV specials that pop up every now and then. The main reason for it is because every couple of years or so, there is always a new bit of information, a new angle that comes into play. Somebody discovers something tied to the case, some quote-unquote relative moves forward and talks about information, all that stuff. Every time it happens, it just keeps reopening the interest of this D.B. Cooper. So that's why even after all these years, it remains so mysterious but so very fascinating. So, so again, what was this case? What happened with? D.B. Cooper. Well, again, quick summary of it. It all happened in November 24th, 1971. This uh, sketch that you're looking at, that's a composite of him given by eyewitnesses. This is what happened. So on that day, he apparently went up to a counter of Northwest Orient Airlines, purchased a ticket, and then boarded the plane just waiting to take off. Um, the way eyewitnesses described it, he was just a nonchalant man, either 5 feet 10 inches or up to 6 inches tall. He was wearing just a plain dark suit a night uh, I guess a nice neatly pressed white collared shirt a plain black necktie just very ordinary you could not pick him out from any other uh, lineup I guess that was his whole purpose he wanted to make sure that nobody could I guess pin him from a uh, from a crowd the only distinct that a thing that he had was a briefcase and then also a mother of pearl tie pin so again very briefly as far as what happened next uh, so once the plane went off then that's when he gave a note to the flight attendants she at first thought Apparently that it was just him hitting on her, but then he whispered to her that he really better take a look at the note. And when she did so, that's when it instructed her that he had a bomb. So she wanted more proof of this. She sat with him based on the instructions of the bomb. He showed her something that looked like a bomb. And then that's when things took the next turn because based on his demands, he wanted $200,000 in what he called negotiable American currency. That that's a lot of money back then because today's dollars, it would be over a million dollars. So a good amount of money. In other words, he wanted four parachutes, two primary and two reserve. And then finally, he wanted a fuel truck somewhere in Seattle where they were going to land because that was its original destination. So the flight attendant went to the cockpit with the pilots. They in turn radioed the airport there in Seattle who in turn notified the authorities, the police, the FBI, everything started to come into play as far as this escalating of course into a true hijacking and either the, I'm trying to remember how the story goes, but either the ransom was met first and then the plane landed or the plane landed and the ransom was then met afterward. I think it was the first one because it took a couple of hours but finally that's when the plane landed and that's when the ransom 
ransom money and the fuel truck and the four parachutes were given to this D.B. Cooper. And then true to his word, he allowed the other passengers, there were 36 other passengers on that plane to depart. And the only people left on it were him, one more flight attendant, and then the two co-pilots as, I guess, his remaining hostages. So that's when things took the next turn because the plane took off. There's more details associated with that too. I think there was details about him uh, wanting to take off with the back portion of the plane open, but that wasn't allowed, I guess, because of how unsafe it was. And then there was even an interesting bit. Apparently that fuel truck malfunctioned, either the fuel pump or something else malfunctioned. And so things could have taken a much worse turn, but luckily, this guy D.B. Cooper, he did not overreact. He instead allowed another fuel truck to come by, kind of delay things, but it was done. Also, another brief interesting note, the 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 ransom money was all collected in $20 bills, but they were very specific. They had a whole bunch of very specific serial numbers, a whole bunch of series numbers tied to them, and they were all painstakingly photographed, I guess, so that way if if this ransom money was used later on then it could absolutely be traced to where it was used hence in turn leading to this mysterious db cooper by the way that db cooper apparently that moniker was incorrect because he had given on his airline ticket the alias Dan Cooper but it seems like there was some miscommunication between the news media and they in turn started referring to him as DB Cooper and but it just took off um, that they just stayed that way so in any case the plane left uh, according to the co-pilots they were originally talking to this guy Cooper and he was stating he wanted to just go all the way to Mexico but that the plane with its fuel, the amount of fuel it had would not make it. So the next agreed upon time, or uh, I guess landing, was going to be Reno, Nevada. And then that's when things go into the last leg of the journey of D.B. Cooper. Because once it was decided that things were going to be landing in Reno, Nevada, he then instructed the remaining flight attendant to go up to the cockpit and that would leave him by himself in the back area so the only remaining witnesses to the last I guess couple of minutes of D.B. Cooper in terms of, of viewing witnesses uh, they were all now in the front cockpit all uh, blocked up front there with you know doors closed they can't see him anymore and that's it that's all that's left known in terms of D.B. Cooper what is known though afterward is somewhere around 8 p.m. 8 10 ish or so p.m. that's when according to the pilots there was an alarm showcasing that the back door of the plane like the very very back door the rear door the one that comes out towards the back portion of the door I think it's called the aft air stair that it was deployed and that also there was a change in pressure within the plane again indicating that all of a sudden while it was up in the air something was opened in the back and then it was presumed that he jumped because when the plane landed later on in Reno Nevada there was no evidence of him on that plane anymore so he had used those parachutes to jump off and then that was it that was the only last known speculation of him interesting things to note too when the plane took off um, after the original ransom and it was on its way to Reno Nevada there were two fighter jets that were following it that were tailing it so if if you weren't aware of that information I like I wasn't now um, that was interesting to find out too but unfortunately those fighter jets the way this was happening it was all happening at night and there was a very 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 cloudy night so they couldn't see up above they couldn't see down below to give you a perspective apparently those fighter pilots could not see the plane itself we're talking about a very very large 727 they could not see it because of the cloudy situation so whenever the door was being opened in the back of the plane no way they would see it let alone a tiny figure of a man all dressed in black because remember he had that black suit jumping off of it so as far as any other witnesses to where he was going and where he was landing Nope, nobody has that information. That's where it all takes a mysterious turn because there's so many angles 
that people think about what happened to him. There's the idea that he may have just plummeted to his death because apparently the parachutes that he took, the four of them that were given to him, two of uh, one of them was an actual dummy one like it was a training one of some sort he either purposely or accidentally took that one along with a real one as his two because he only carried two of them with him when he jumped from the plane and so if he in turn had the dummy one as the one he was trying to deploy too little too late like he would have most likely plummeted to his death and that would have been the end of him there are others that are speculating that he did deploy it like the correct parachute but because of the cloudy circumstance and i think it was a large set of thunderstorms someone might may need to correct me on this but that there was no way he could have landed safely and then there's others that speculated that even if he did land safely that it would be very hard for him to try to make it back to any civilization because apparently where he jumped off, which is hard in of itself to try to guess because even with the trajectory of the plane, the way that I was reading the information, like how fast it was going and then also the weather conditions of the weather and then also how long it took for him to deploy the chute, all those factored into many, many, many miles of area from one place to another. So it's too much, in other words, to try to pinpoint one specific location. But let's say he did land in one specific location, then if he was far away from civilization, then that's it. He would not have the ability to try to make it somewhere. And when that happens, then he would be out. Like he would either starve to death or most likely not have enough water to uh, survive his trip. And so that's why a lot of people speculate that he is also deceased because of that manner. Now, as far as the only physical evidence remaining of him, what's interesting to note is that this physical evidence is a huge auction type material like this stuff sells for thousands and thousands tens of thousands of dollars in fact you're looking at some of it here apparently in uh, 1980 some twenty dollar bills were found buried within some kind of riverbank of some sort and it was just pure by accident somebody was building a, a like a campfire of some sort and when they were scraping away at something near the riverbank that's when they found these dollar bills and these twenty dollar bills have been proven to be part of the pack of money that was given to db cooper so this stuff has a very very high resale value uh, so that's also uh, part of the evidence the other uh, apparently there was a set of instructions, a placard of some sort that were found somewhere near some logging road of some sort near Castle Rock, Washington. And these instructions were specifically for lowering the aft stairs of a 727. You know, ding ding, that is the very same plane that D.B. Cooper was on and very specifically how he jumped off the plane itself. So these two pieces of evidence um, after uh, the hijacking have now been uh, reported to be the only known evidence of him in terms of, of his encounters, I guess, his exploits. And then finally, before that, though, the other evidence, if you wanted to count that too, is his tie. Because apparently, whenever he was jumping from the plane, seeing as it was no longer necessary, he took off his tie, which was actually a clip on tie, and it was there remaining in the actual plane. So, whenever it landed there in Reno, Nevada, and it was searched, the tie was there. It was found to have fingerprints, if you could believe it. The only problem is, uh, apparently, the FBI has stated that there is is very hard proof indicating if the fingerprints were found which haven't been identified to anybody are in fact his are in fact D.B. Cooper's because if indeed those were his fingerprints then they need to find a suspect to compare them to speaking of which suspects there are plenty galore um, if you truly absolutely want to go over all the uh, I guess most credible suspects there's at least five or six to do so and that's just t barely touching the iceberg of this it's out there on the internet there's one that w there was a, a niece of some sort that was stating that she believes her family member her one of her relatives was D.V. Cooper because the way that he apparently loved the uh, comic book some comic book I guess called Dan Cooper and the way she found him one day 
kind of like in an accident this was the day after the hijacking uh like he was bruised he had on a bloodied shirt he was explaining that he was in some kind of accident that uh according to her she was thinking that he was truly uh db cooper this guy's name was by the way lynn doyle cooper i don't know if that last name is truly a coincidence or not but that's to give you an idea of one of the suspects associated with it so there's plenty plenty more so if you truly absolutely want to go over that information please there's lots of websites that talk about those in further details um, although this guy I think Lynn Doyle Cooper his fingerprints were not matching the, the ones on the f necktie if I'm not mistaken a couple of years later it was determined that but again it just leaves the idea open of who else could D.B. Cooper be so anyways just wanted to present that information here um, if anyone knows any other really interesting twists or uh, turns tied in with this case of D.B. Cooper that would be really good to hear if anyone has any uh, I guess of their own theories let's say on who this man was and wanted to give I guess their angle and their perspective of it that would be very very awesome to hear too lots of continuing stories uh, associated with him I very much doubt that we're ever gonna have a hundred percent concrete solvable case here if anything uh, and this is just me I think that if he did survive he's just living out in the open like living in plain broad daylight and what I mean is this like whenever that one of the what's that guy's name uh, that Green River killer was found it turns out that he was someone that wasn't hiding like he was actually just living a normal life going to church normal life in the sense that people thought he was normal and going to church working a job he was just out there like he was absolutely not hiding same thing with uh the was i got that whitey bugler i think I believe his last name was whenever he uh that mafioso guy he ran off and escaped uh, before he could be captured it turns out that he was living in uh broad daylight as well like he was I believe it was somewhere in California that he was living just renting out an apartment just living there with his girlfriend uh, talking to neighbors uh, people around him so if that's the angle that I think of here that um, if truly this guy D.B. Cooper is still alive that somewhere he's in here in the United States like he's not in other words in Zimbabwe or some other far off land uh, purposely away from the US but no just living out there uh, amongst us but nonchalantly just like when he was about to board and take that plane ransom uh, that would be the in his case the best way to continue to not draw attention to himself but in any case I'll go ahead and I'll continue my other videos here in a little bit uh, but yes please post your comments I'd be most interested to hear what you think of this mysterious case of DB Cooper thank you so much everybody take care